Hello guys, welcome back to Mornings with Granny. I hope you're having a good day. Let's see if we can get you situated a little better here. All right. I thought I would do the video from the bedroom today. Just have a different look. I'm getting ready to get busy cleaning up a little bit, but I wanted to make this video because of a comment I received. I checked my comments this morning. And the comment was, you make plenty of money from YouTube, and what is tight versus frugal? Well, number one, I don't make anything from YouTube. I have never received a check from YouTube. I keep telling you guys that. I tried to monetize last month, but I did something wrong. I don't know what I did wrong, and I can't figure out what I did wrong, so I can't correct it till I figure out what I did wrong. So I've never received a check. Even when I did the uh, review on the Jace medical kit. And they give you a commission if you sell any because of your review. I told them I didn't want it. I believed in their product. It's the only product I've ever done. And I believed in the product and I just wanted to get it out there to help people. So I didn't take anything. There was a guy or a woman, I'm not sure which it is, that does reviews on how much money YouTubers make. And a few years back, he come on there. I had had a good year, or a good month that month. A couple of videos had got like 175,000 views, which was rare. And he come on there and said, Mornings with Granny makes $1,500 a month. And I wrote him and I said, I've never received a check from YouTube and you pick the only month that I have ever made that much if I had took the money. And so be careful because, you know, sometimes I look at my uh, chart and maybe 36 cents that day. Some days I've made $30. Some days I've made $2. You don't make that much. You have to have a lot of views to make anything on YouTube. I don't know why people think you can make that much. There's very, very few people that make a lot of money on YouTube. Now, frugal versus tight. I actually watched videos this morning on that because of the remark the person made. Frugal versus tight. Tight is more of thinking in the now and hoarding money. Now, this is my opinion. Frugal is thinking about spending your money and getting the best quality for it. And I'll give you an example. Getting the car battery the other day is a good example. When I went in there, they gave me the cheapest price, which was a two-year battery, 189 and I said, well, how much is the three-year battery? 214 So, of course, I said, put the three-year battery in it. I mainly went to Advance Auto because that's where I had bought the other battery, and I thought maybe it might still be under warranty, but it wasn't. It was a two-year battery, and it had been two and a half years. It didn't fix the problem, but I would have needed a battery this winter anyway, so... I've got the battery now, and they gave me a 10% discount, so I spent $198 for a three-year battery, which comes to what, uh, three and a 200, about, what, 67.50 a year, something like that. I always break things down, because when I buy something, I want to know how long it lasts. So we try to buy quality, and be patient. Don't just run out and buy something you know, how many times do you go to the store and you fill your buggy up and then you get home and you go, why did I buy that? I walk through the store and I put items I think I might want in my cart, even at the thrift store, because if you don't, somebody else will grab it. I walk around the store and if I decide that I don't really want that, and you saw an example of that when I did the salvage shop, if I don't want that, then I take that back and put it back. Because when I get to thinking about it, I go, do I really need it? Do I really need that? Mom and I were in the thrift store. Oh, it's been maybe a month, month and a half. I don't know. And they have tables in that thrift store. And they put all the linens on the table. All linens, curtains, 
towels, washcloths. They're all a quarter. Sleeping bags, whatever. They're a quarter. I have bought Biltmore towels in there for a quarter. Do you know how much Biltmore towels are at Belts? They're 28 bucks, unless you catch them on sale. Um, but anyway, there was an Eddie Bauer white king size comforter there for 25 cents. Do you know how much Eddie Bauer cost? And I told mom, I, I, I picked it up, and I was like, mm, no, I don't need it. I've got comforters at home that you've seen them that I paid a quarter for. I don't need it. I don't really like white, especially with gizmo. It shows dirt too much. And so I put it back. I didn't want it. So that was a good case of quality. When my coffee pot went out a few years back, I think it's been, I want to say about three years, we were going to Walmart. Now, I'm not knocking Walmart. Walmart does have good quality stuff, too. But I was going there to get the cheap coffee pot. It was like 17 or $19. But we stopped at a thrift store on the way. I told Mom, I said, let's look at the thrift store first. Walked in there. They had a Keurig for $15. I've been using that Keurig ever since. So it's averaged me about $5 a year. Or what, about, I don't know, 40 cents a month, something like that, if you break it all the way down. So I got a quality product for $15. I could have got a new product for not much more, but it probably wouldn't have lasted as long. Keurig's a good coffee pot. So that's another example. If you want to see tight, watch Extreme Cheapskates. I was sitting there watching that one day, and the guy was washing his paper towels and wiping out his paper plates, hanging them up to dry. And I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at it, and I'm going, if you were going to wash it anyway, and the purpose is to save money, why did you buy paper plates and towels when you could have used a glass plate and a cloth napkin that you were going to wash. That just didn't make sense to me. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I mean, I use paper plates once in a while, and if, let's say, I have a piece of toast for breakfast and all it's got is a couple of crumbs on it, then, yeah, I'll probably use it again for lunchtime. But mainly, I use my plates that I have. My set of plates I bought at the thrift store for a set of, let's see, it was a set of 12, I think it's 12, it's either 8 or 12, and I pay, it's Corel, and I paid, I think it was $5 for the set. I believe it was $5. Pretty sure it was. Every time I get tired of my plates, I just go to the thrift store and get another set and then give them the set I got. And that's the way I've been doing for years. I have been, I've had good china, I've had Corel, I've had different kinds. And I just, when I get tired of it, I go find another set. Or maybe I'm in the thrift store and I see a nice set and it's three or four dollars. And in fact, when I got that set of Corel, there was a new set of pasta dishes in that box too. So I gave those to my daughter. So. That's just being frugal. I could have went to the store and bought a new set of Corel, but there's nothing wrong with the ones from the thrift store. I'm using my money wisely. I mean, think about it. I, I don't mind. You go to a restaurant and you eat off of plates that other people have ate off of. You're going to wash them. I bought, when I lived at the beach, the motels would have sales around there because they would be refurbishing and they would have sales. And you could get dressers for 10 bucks and beds for ten dollars and whatever. Well, I was moving into an apartment at that time that didn't have anything but the washer dryer stove and refrigerator. I needed a bed. So they were having a sale the mattress and box springs for ten bucks. So I went and picked out the best one and bought it. People made fun of me for buying that bed. You sleeping on that bed and it come out of a motel? I said look I paid $10 for that bed to sleep on. You pay a hundred and something dollars a night to go stay in that motel to sleep on one of those beds. 
<laughs> why, why are you making any sense? What's wrong with me doing that? Buying it for $10 instead of paying a hundred and something dollars a night to sleep on it. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, I aired it out. I sprayed it real well, put a cover on it, and I used that mattress for a long time. So uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Like I said, think before you buy. You have to think about how your money's being spent. All right, guys. I just wanted to talk about that because I, I, I just it made me stop and think. You know, tight versus frugality. I'm not tight. Uh, another example of being tight versus being frugal. A tight person would never buy stuff and give it away. They would keep it for themselves if they bought it to start with. A tight person would ask somebody to go out to eat, and then when they got out to eat, they would expect that person to pay for it. If I ask you to go out to eat, I expect to pay for my own. I'm not going to ask anyone to go eat unless I can pay for my own. So, that's, that's another difference. But anyway, all right. I'm going to get off of here and get busy doing some stuff. I have some things I want to do today. And someone asked me about doing a, a video on cooking those collards. I've already cooked them. But if you watch my video on uh, cooking creasy greens, we cook all our greens the same, all the same way. Collards, you just look them, make sure there's no bugs or worms or anything stuck to them. Uh, pull that main rib out, and then I cut them in ribbons about that wide. Wash them three or four times. You keep washing them till the water is clear and you don't have any sand or anything in the bottom. Those were pretty nice. They didn't have much sand on them at all. They weren't very buggy. The outer leaves had been eaten a little, ate a little, but that was it. Had a few holes. Um... And then we use we use ham. I had some country ham in the freezer. I pulled it out and I put that in. And we add sugar because we cut the bitterness of the collards and salt and pepper and just let them cook till they get tender. Could take an hour, could take two hours. I think I cooked those yesterday about two hours. I brought them up to a boil and cooked them on low for about two hours. Some people season them with turkey, smoked turkey, smoked ham hocks. Some people don't put any type of meat in them. They just cook them with a little bit of vegetable oil in them or no oil at all. I know one woman that cooks hers and she just puts a little bit of uh, lemon juice in it. Some people put vinegar and red pepper in theirs. It just depends on you. There are several recipes out there. I'll try to remember when I do the potato soup. I know I have what I call the red potato soup. It's sausage and potato. I call it red potato soup because the salt, the um, soup is red instead of white. So um, there are several videos out there, though, for that too, for potato soup. But I'll try to remember to do a video when I make the potato soup. So sorry about the one on the collards. I didn't even think about doing a video. But if you go look in my playlist and look in the cooking, there is one for creasy greens. And like I said, we, we cook all greens the same. It doesn't matter if it's mustard green, turnip greens, greasy greens, whatever. We all, we cook them all the same. Same thing with dried beans. We cook them all the same. If you watch one dried bean recipe on my channel, no matter what dried bean I'm cooking, it's going to be the same. So, all right, guys. Don't forget to, uh, can't talk this morning. Wake up. Don't forget to give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.